back home in South Bend, Indiana, Mayor Pete Buttigieg faces a nightmare. And I've read a little bit about this story, but what is good old uh, Buttigieg facing in South Bend, his uh, old town? Well, the Ed Judge 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 is facing a issue as he goes back to, I believe is he, he he's still mayor there. If, just correct me if I'm wrong. He's still actively mayor of the town, right? I believe so. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I think he's still actively the mayor. Huh. Yeah, because like, usually when you run like just with anyone else, you run, you keep your seat open, but you're not there. Yeah, so. because Tulsi Gabbard's still yeah. representative of Hawaii. Sure. Senator Bernie Sanders yeah. is still senator. So he's Saint still. Paul Warren, yeah, Corey Booker, I think it just. I just wanted to make sure that I had that right because that was seemed pretty obvious. Okay. Yeah. So in recent weeks, uh, Pete Buttigieg Judge 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 has emerged as a surprise successor of the twenty. 20 presidential campaign, that's arguable, and he has accumulated over three, uh, 340,000 followers on Twitter. Fantastic. Uh, there's a bunch of people I know that have more than that. Uh, mm-hmm. Then the bad news came for South Bend, the town, yes, yeah, so he's still mayor. A uh, white police officer had shot and killed a black man early Sunday. Uh, Buttigieg judge, 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 judge canceled several days of campaign events, including an LGBTQ gala in New York. I'm sure it was very, very pricey. And rushed back to Indiana to be with the South Bend community, end quote, in the words of a spokesman. And this has been something that we've brought up on the show before. That's something that we expected to be an Achilles heels, which is his entire thing is, I'm sh- I should be president. I'm a great mayor. And the reality is he's actually not that good of a mayor. So we're going to get into that in this article. So the Achilles heel uh, that has been perceived is how he doesn't have the best relationship with the African-American community in the town that he props talks about saying how much of a great relationship he has. So uh, this is a nightmare, said uh, Jordan uh, Geiger, a community organizer who is close to uh, Logan Stanley, the person that was shot. You have to imagine the first thing he said to the police chief was, you all had one job. Don't shoot a black guy while I'm running for president. Holy crap. It's probably Stupid, dumb thing to say. Probably, well, he's, he's imagining him saying that, but I agree. He probably said it in some capacity. If you're, <laughs> you're going to be running for mayor, you don't want that to happen. So the shooting was handed, uh, has handed Buddha Judge the first significant sh- uh, challenge. I mean, there's other challenges we brought up, but I guess mainstream media. It's the yeah. first significant challenge to his charmed campaign and that's mm-hmm. the article i'm quoting on that to analyze his decision to leave the campaign trail and then hold two days of private meetings signals deliberate considerate leadership but to detractors basically the community remember this article is always written from the point of hey he's an establishment person everything he does must be by definition good so let's keep going including many of south bend's black activists you know just the detractors uh has shown his action that he still doesn't get it how is he handling it uh, the longest, I uh, said Oliver Davis, the longest serving black member of the South Bend community. And I think this is important. Well, he talked to the media before the family. He skipped the family vigil full of black residents and then gave a speech to the police. How do you think that went over? That's On the campaign trail, Buttigieg boasted of transforming, in quotes, South Bend into one of the nation's, quote, <clears throat> best run, quote, cities. But... 40% of black residents live here well below the poverty line. So I guess if that's the, what we should expect from a Buddha administration is 40% poverty for black residents, I guess there you have it. That's good governance. In the area where Logan died is somewhere in the middle, a historically black neighborhood near downtown where the old high school has been transformed into luxury apartments inhabited primarily by white residents. Kit, doesn't that sound like all of the gentrification that we've seen in the city of Chicago. From Pilsen to um, Logan Square to the northwest side of Chicago to Inglewood to uh, South Austin, all over where we've covered uh, gentrification in the past. Sounds shockingly, horrifically similar. Sounds like that's how it's done. Yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's keep going on what the great job, uh, oh, great leader, Buddha Judge, 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 Judge is doing for us. When asked whether he planned to open channels to the Logan family who were waiting at that moment in the next room, Buttigieg was noncommittal. He wound up speaking briefly to the family, but the meeting ended after they grew frustrated with Buttigieg's inability to provide information and his lack of compassion, friends of the family said. He ain't done nothing, a Logan's mother, Shirley Newbill, later recounted. He ain't recognized me as a mother of nothing. He didn't say nothing to me. The next morning, Buttigieg huddled with 25 leaders of the black 
uh, South Bend's black and Hispanic neighborhoods at a regularly scheduled community roundtable at the city civil rights heritage museum. And he did a little meet and greet. And what was interesting is the activists who were mentioned earlier as just detractors were excluded from this meeting. And they were also very unhappy that he did not appear at the actual vigil when that happened. And they were there's also lingering resentment when they fought when he fired the black police chief um, soon after taking office in 2012. And someone, this is a quote from the organizers. If you spill milk on the ground and you wipe it up, it doesn't stink. But if you let milk stay on the ground, it goes sour and stinks up the room, said Davis, the common council member. Mayor Pete let milk stay on the ground and stink up the room. And I also want to mention, they added this at the end of the article, that currently, again, dealing with police, all of the new cadets that were just brought in for the police force are white. All six. So I want to just give a short reminder too, especially what's happening in South Bend, Indiana. There's a lot of gentrification happening there. And in fact, there are some progressive ch- uh, candidates that are right now cha- uh, challenging uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg's uh, mayoralship over South Bend, Indiana. It's very interesting that um, you know he's choosing to take the Rahm Emanuel approach in regards to handling yeah. uh, this crisis. And that's, what that, that's what the story reminds me of. It reminds me of how Mayor Rahm Emanuel The city government uh, and the Chicago Police Department handled the the unfortunate shooting of Laquan McDonald. And this sounds just like a small town version of the exact same thing that happened to Laquan McDonald. You have a mayor that's, at this point to me, sounds really out of touch with his constituents, predominantly the African-American community in South Bend, Indiana. It seems like there's an ongoing crisis that's happening there in regards to the mayor, the city government in South Bend, Indiana, as well as the South Bend, Indiana police force. Paul. I, all I can think of is like from maybe a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, there was that photo that circulated around of uh, Buddha Judge drinking a beer out of a paper bag. You know, yes. Th- oh, I like, remember that. And yes. everyone's like, that's oh, no. just so yes. clearly pandering. Like he knows this I is a problem for his campaign. alcohol out of a brown paper bag. I also bag. break the law and pretend I'm not by putting a bag around it. Like yeah. that's, what oh my God. What is like, he expecting them, black people to be like, oh, I can relate to that perfectly. And like, I think that's great. It's so tone deaf. It's just like the worst thing to be like, see, I'm cool with black people. Like, th- do you think that's something they want you to publicly be trying to associate, like public yeah. drinking? And and, and and the Democrats, yeah. and the Democrats so are one wondering why they're losing, especially centrist Democrats are wondering why they're losing progressives and independents, because it's pandering like that that allows them to lose. It's pandering like that that basically lets Trump get an open door in. And it's no wonder why Pete Buttigieg, Beto O'Rourke, uh, Cory Booker, and Kamala Harris's stars falling, including even Biden, too. Like, they're making these fake pandering attempts, and this establishment media is trying to make it seem like these people are in touch Pete Buttigieg doesn't sound like he's in touch at all with what's happening in South Bend, Indiana. And he thinks he can become president of the United States? It overwhelmingly gives the impression that he is having undue, over-the-top success with insiders and establishment people. Yeah. Right? He's cool with the party. He's cool with everyone in the higher-ups. He's got, he's got good ends with the consultant class. He's not really doing his job, though. Yeah. And it's he's not really connecting with the people who actually need to vote for him. And the, the more he becomes intertwined with that establishment insider class, the more out of touch he is. And it's the more it's visible, the more it's publicly obvious. I think it's even worse than that because that comes from the assumption that before he ran for president, he was actually working on this and trying to make things better. Oh, no, I think he was working on yeah, getting his ties with insiders. Yeah. And he already did. We, we already know he was with the Navy intelligence. He has connections with the CIA. So it's... Okay, so, so yeah. we are actually getting some comments in the chat about gentrification and really just... What it is specifically? Yeah. yeah, so basically, yeah. Um, and somebody even mentioned too, hold on... Um, Anna Shinar, um, I hope I said your name right. I'm sorry. Have there been mayors who have handled gentrification or such shootings well? Any people to look for a good example? I don't think there is one. But the, well, it's, it's, let me just clarify that. Because I also want to mention yeah. what the gentrification is. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. But very quickly, just the problem is that the U.S. is not interested in having an accurate strategy because the it's a system that's functioning as intended. And that's the whole issue. Yeah. So And, and the thing with gentrification specifically, we're going to use Chicago because this is the only place that really we, – we, it's a major metropolitan city. So 
so there's a lot that's happening here. We've covered a lot of stories. And what's happening now is uh, under Mayor Rahm Emanuel's leadership, as it was heavily intensified, there were a lot of large real estate developers coming into a lot of south and west side communities. And, and um, you know, it, the problem was, was that they were buying up land, they were shutting down public schools, and then they were raising the rents and the, the land prices all across the city, speci specifically on south and west side communities. And many people have been displaced or working just two or three jobs just to make ends meet. Most notably in Pilsen, uh, 10,000 people were displaced uh, because the just the, the cost of rent or owning a home was just too too much. So I want to just give a very quick, because I know we got to move on, yeah. a very quick another way to summarize how to look at gentrification. It's imagine your community who the city that you're living in, whatever city, it could be South Bend, Chicago, anywhere, has terrible schools, terrible infrastructure, terrible job prospects police are very abusive or when you need them they're not there all the services work poorly you're not given money you're not your community's not invested and then all of a sudden a bunch of uh generally white people start moving in the area and all of a sudden the city's like okay now we're going to start giving you those schools and those and those libraries and those supermarkets and those things and then in the process they go to the people who've been living there for generations, well, you clearly don't make enough money and aren't educated because you didn't have access to schools. You aren't as healthy because you didn't have access to health care. You didn't have access to fresh fruits your entire life. You, all these different things. So clearly this town isn't for you anymore because you can't afford it because you didn't get the resources you needed when you grew up that we're now providing, which are now expensive. Yeah. So that's the other way to look at gentrification is it's to take a place that has no resources and then replace it with a place that does Yep. Kicking out the people who don't have them because they don't have them. Yep. Do you like that video? Be sure to subscribe. Paul, what do you think? We need your help in order to fight back against the military industrial complex and corporations. Yeah, that sounds right. You can do that by going to our Patreon page and supporting us. All we ask is for the equivalent of one Starbucks iced coffee a day, which is just $50. Please help us out. It's cheaper now.